Hi everyone, a wee while ago LEGO reached out through the LEGO Ambassadors Network to ask if I'd like to be a participant in the LEGO Super Mario Championship. Of course, I jumped at the opportunity and I had a lot of fun. Last Wednesday at 9pm uh, on the 10th of June, uh, we had our session. It was myself and nine other fan medias, uh, as well as one of the designers and hosted by uh, LEGO Masters UK host. Uh, it was a lot of fun. LEGO sent some sets in advance. We were able to build these and play with it and get to know how it all worked. And then we had some challenges set during the course of the hour. And we also got to ask the designer some questions. The following video is a recording of that session. So please sit back, relax and enjoy the video. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And again, I just want to thank LEGO for inviting me to participate and uh, I would definitely, definitely jump at the opportunity to do it again. So. Hi everyone. Hello. Hey. And welcome to this Hello. Hey. session. <laughs> hey. Or well, whatever uh, okay, it is for so you. I'm Melvin O'Doom. I'm excited to be your host for the LEGO Super Mario Championships. Hey. Hey. As you may know, I'm also the host of LEGO Masters UK, which means I've had lots of opportunity to play with LEGO and this LEGO release is like nothing I have ever seen before. I am super excited about this. Now with me today I'm also joined by Jonathan Benning who is the digital design lead, lead at LEGO Group and also one of the brains behind LEGO Super Mario. He's going to be co-hosting with me today giving us all the inside knowledge about the sets as well as judging your wonderful creations which I know that you guys have been working on over the last few days and I can't wait to see them. We're going to speak to him very, very soon. Time for some housekeeping now. Can I request that you guys keep your microphones on mute unless you're actually speaking to me when we come to you for questions. But I did love the cheering at the start though, I have to say. Uh, this session will be filmed, but don't worry because you all look glorious and beautiful. The session is going to last an hour in which Jonathan will set a series of challenges to test both your creativity and skill. With each challenge, scores will be added and logged to a live scoreboard, and at the end, those with the highest scores will be rewarded with spot prizes. This is the point where you go, ooh. I'm sure you did it. I know you guys are with me. All right, and can I also remind you guys to point your cameras clearly when you're showing off your build so Jonathan can see everything. That's all the housekeeping, so let's find out who we have in the virtual Lego house. Okay, so first up we have Graham, Graham, you there? I'm here, yeah. How you doing, Graham? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And whereabouts in the world are you, Graham? London. London, great, great. Good to have you here. London representing. Uh, let's go over to Chris. <laughs> hello, Chris. Yes, hello. Hi, yeah. How you doing, sir? I'm, I'm very and, well, uh, Where are you calling from? Durham, UK. Durham, great. Good to have you here. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, let's speak to Andreas now. Hi, Andreas. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. Can you hear me? <laughs> Good. Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Lovely setup. I can okay. see there's lots of bricks in the background, so I know you're going to have a great build for us later on. Uh, whereabouts are you, Andreas? I'm here in Hamburg, north of Germany. Ah, guten Tag. Wie geht es dir heute? Sehr, sehr gut. Ich hoffe dir auch. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, thank you very much, Andreas. Let's speak to William now. Hey, hello, I'm William. Here in. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, here in uh, rainy France near the Swiss border. Very excited to join. Oh, great. I think the weather's uh, very similar here as well. But good to have you here. Thank <laughs> yeah. you very much, William. Let's speak to Jetro now. Good morning. I'm in uh, Spain. Hello, Jetro. How are you? Doing okay. Good to have you here. I can see lots of colourful post-it notes in the background, so I'm imagining a very organised build very uh, later on. Uh, well, I don't know. Well, we'll see. It's, it's on the side. I have a separate camera set up for that and two little helpers to the side who will stay off camera for now. Who's, uh, who are your helpers? Let's meet them quickly. My daughter's uh, Lido and Evelyn. Hi, guys. Oh, Good to meet you, too. Well, there you go. Hey. <laughs> Good to meet you. 
All right, we'll come back to you very, very soon. Let's speak to Christopher now. Hello, Hello. Christopher. Hello. You've, you've got some very romantic lighting in the background there. I like it. Thanks. <laughs> oh. And where are you right now, Christopher? Uh, I'm in Leeds, England. Leeds, good to have you here. Thank you very much, Christopher. Uh, let's speak to Daniel now. Wow. Good evening, everyone. Hello, Daniel. Uh, I'm Daniel, and I'm from New Zealand, probably the sole representation from our little country. <laughs> well, it looks like you've got a lot of Lego, so I'm very excited about your build. Good to have you here. All right, let's speak to Richard now. Hello, Richard. Hello, how are you? G'day. I'm um, very well, I'm sir. In Northern and whereabouts Australia? in the world are you? Northern I'm in Australia. Melbourne, Australia. Yeah. Melbourne. And what's the uh, weather like there? Sunny but cold today. We've um, been having, okay. we're, we've so, just entered winter and it's um, very, very crisp and fresh and our central heating has just broken down. So Sorry, I'll get someone around members. later on. Don't you worry about that, Richard. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> We've got your back. <laughs> Excellent. All right, Thanks, last Melvin. but not least, he is the Mario to my Luigi. It is, of course, Jonathan Benig. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to this great session. Uh, really good to see you all. And uh, very nice to see some uh, familiar faces, uh, Graham and Christopher. We've done some interviews before. Uh, so uh, good to see you guys again. Um, so welcome to the global reveal of the full LEGO Super Mario uh, product range. Um, and you are uh, part of a select group of, uh, of, uh, of people we have invited to have a first look at the whole assortment uh, for this new ex and exciting product line of LEGO and Nintendo. So before we start, I would like to show you guys a video uh, of what LEGO... So you have received some of these uh, amazing sets at your home. Uh, but uh, So I'll just uh, point out a few highlights of the, some of the sets that you haven't received. So from the start, uh, LEGO and Nintendo team really wanted Mario to have a home. Uh, a place where he can uh, get some uh, naps in between all that running and jumping that he does. So we have created Mario's house. And at Mario's house there is his best buddy Yoshi, which he can talk to. And get some coins from. There's a little hammock here underneath the, the tree where you can wiggle him about and slowly, gently rock him to sleep. And of course he can go into his little house as well. Then I want to talk about my second favorite power-up pack. You guys already have my favorite one, which is the cat. Uh, but this is the propeller. So I take off Mario's costume. He says, Mamma Mia, he doesn't like that. And now we have the propeller costume. And with the propeller costume, Mario takes to the sky and you can fly around the room 
and by twisting and turning and getting speed you collect coins. And we hope that this uh, incentivizes uh, or stimulates fans to build uh, uh, levels throughout their house and not just in one place and you fly from one bit of the level to the other. Then a very iconic site in each Mario uh, course at least in the classic ones, is the fortress at the end. And we have made a, a Lego version of this here. And we have um, made three different paths towards the, uh, the fortress. And there's a piranha plant, there's a little bomb arm, um, which actually is a lot of fun. You get a lot of coins from it until Mario blows up. Yeah, you have to kind of time it uh, in order to not hit it when, he, when, the, when the bomb blows. But at the end, there's a little function here where you can place the finish brick from your end, from the goal pole, from the starter course, and then when you finish the level, the flag gets raised, just like in the game. And of course, uh, I would like to quickly point out Bowser Castle, which we've already revealed earlier this year. Um, but it's a magnificent piece at the end of each level. And uh, if you do well today, you know, it is up for grabs. So, very exciting. So as you uh, have uh, hopefully experienced, uh, LEGO Super Mario is all about building levels out of your imagination and uh, using your creativity to build anything you want uh, and then playing the levels with your new body, LEGO Mario. Now um, in those levels you have a set amount of time, 60 seconds, unless you find some more time by using the time block or uh, getting a power up from the question mark block. But in that time you are to collect coins and the amount of coins depends on what you build and how you play. So as you can see, uh, LEGO Super Mario takes that uh, core DNA of LEGO of building things out of your imagination uh, and making it more interactive by infusing those famous Mario game mechanics. Now over the past couple of days you've had the pleasure of, uh, or the hopeful pleasure of, of building our sets and also using our companion app. Um, now the companion app is there to update Mario, but besides that it has uh, three main functions. Um, and that is to... Uh, teach the experience, so all the building instructions are there uh, and there are uh, uh, videos that show how to play with, uh, with Mario, how to run and jump and how to uh, use the propeller costume for instance, how to defeat the enemies and the challenges. And then we have an inspiration section which is currently filled with uh, blueprints, so layouts for level ideas, but as we go live on the 1st of August it will be filled with uh, creations from around the world and uh, we really hope that uh, our community, and uh, now I'm pointing to you guys, uh, will build some awesome levels and uh, those will actually uh, show up, the most liked ones and also a selection of, uh, of other ones, show up in that inspiration section to, uh, uh, to make sure that uh, you know, kids keep uh, building levels and, uh, and having fun. And then there will also be a weekly challenge in that inspiration section where you can submit your idea to. And then finally there is a photo album section uh, where you can take a picture of your level. If you are connected to the app, you can also attach your coin score to it. And then from there, you can rest safe in the knowledge that it is uh, secure and saved. And then you can uh, yeah, break up your level again. And you can also share your picture and your coin score with a friend. So, yeah, LEGO Super Mario uh, is a is a complete new way of playing and interacting with LEGO bricks. And it's also the first time that Mario comes to the real world um, in LEGO form at least, or in an interactive form. And we thought it was best that you guys play this all yourself. Which brings us to our first event of the day. So, back to you Melvin. Thank you very much Jonathan. So let's uh, kick off and start with everyone sharing what they've created over the last few days. And do not forget Jonathan is going to be judging you for creativity. Now the winner of this section will have their final scores multiplied by 2.5. The person in second place will have it multiplied by two and the person in third place will have it multiplied by 1.5. Uh, the winner will be revealed at the end and do not forget to point your cameras clearly so Jonathan can see everything. All right, so first uh, let's start with Graham. Please talk through your creation for us. Cheers, Melvin. Uh, let's see if we can see it a little bit. So this very inventive mashup just takes different parts of the sets and puts them together, basically. Uh, I made this tower pretty tall so that Cat Mario can go up there. Um, I included all of the little pink blocks. Uh, yeah, Bowser Jr. is at the end. 
Uh, I'm rubbish at the seesaw thing, but I included it anyway, so that was probably a mistake. Um, so yeah, that's what no, we've got. No, it's not a mistake. <laughs> that will definitely come in handy, trust me. Okay, I'll take your word. That's looking great so far. All right, so Jonathan, was there anything about that that stuck out for you? Yeah, I, I think uh, definitely the tower for Cat Mario. And this is why we included those power-up uh, packs to uh, to make sure that kids find a new way of building. And uh, I can see that you've specially made like a tower for Mario to kind of climb up. So that's really inventive. Super cool. Great work, Graham. Thank you very much. Over to Chris Thank now. You. Chris, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Cool. So I'm on the floor here because it's the only place I had enough room to to get it going, but my course is split into three sections. So we start off with the, mm -hmm. the, the mushroom turds here, and then Cat Mario, once I get him, is gonna go up the side of the TV unit for a bit, do some work on some walls, then we come down to this <laughs> section here. Uh, and we'll come across uh, some of the more dexterity bits, which I've, yeah, and then we'll, so then the cloud will take us into the third and final section, which has got the, the power slide, the parameter slide in it, uh, some more, yep. some more bad guys, we end up with Bowser Jr. right at the end. I love it. Great use of the cloud as well. Uh, Jonathan, any thoughts? Yeah, I always like when, uh, you know, when, when people use the, uh, not just Lego, but also, uh, you know, parts of their environment. So the, climbing up the, t the television is quite funny. Uh, and then um, <laughs> uh, it looks very spread out, like very 3D, which I think is really cool. So it kind of reminds me of those old Mario uh, maps that you had. So very pretty. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Over to Andreas now. Andreas, let's see your build. <laughs> yes, love the hat already. <laughs> okay, please love you, please, uh, Andreas. Okay, okay, That's all right. It. And this is my, this is the creation of my daughter totally. And she played a lot with all those sets. So this has changed a few times already. So she already included the, the figures I brought her from uh, the Nintendo yeah. store in New York. <laughs> awesome. So she was really <laughs> playing a lot. And this is kind of the, the last version. But there have been so many versions already. So she really, really was on the run here. So there is not one version of it. And she was playing. And this is uh, when she was leaving office yesterday. That's the status. So, <laughs> all right, here we go. That's <laughs> all we have right now. Uh, Andreas, I love it. And I love your energy as well. Uh, Jonathan, what did you think of that? I, I mean, that is just, that's why we, we built this product, right? Because uh, of, of just uh, building and rebuilding. And I love to hear that there have been like so many iterations already. And uh, yeah. yeah, the little uh, Goomba and the Boo uh, dolls uh, really, uh, uh, bring it to life. So, super cool. Very nice to hear. <laughs> Thank you, Andreas. Over to William now. Hello, William. Hey. Uh, Hi, so let's see that build. I've been, I've been building uh, with my son and... Uh, okay, he made quite a compact uh, level just because of space, but he also wanted to organize everything so he could get uh, first he wanted to get maximum time possibility at the beginning. And then it's a more mashup of uh, everything which uh, stood out for him uh, as it progressed to the level. So the selection is uh, really like uh, by a kid regarding his own interest and how to progress uh, uh, to the end of the level. I really didn't get much to, to say through this, but uh, it's quite satisfying actually. Uh, William, I think that's a, a great build and a great use of space there. Is your son with you? He's welcome to join us as well if he's around. Uh, I will call him, wait. Amory? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, wait, he will come. Um, he's, what, uh, while he's getting his son, Chambon? Jonathan, what did you think of that build? It looks very nice. Uh, and again, it's good to hear that, uh, that, that he got his son, his son involved in building it. And uh, yeah, there, there's been some thought in the level, optimized for gameplay. Definitely, with the time and all the yeah, platforms the, and uh, all the uh, the enemies close to each other. 
So th th there's been some thought in this level, which is good to see. Thank you very much, yeah. William. On to Jetro now. Jetro, hey, you there? Hello. There I am, there I am. Okay, good. Let me switch to the other camera. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, this is this is the level my kids uh, mashed up. Um, I get wow. a feeling I'm missing something at the end. Let me just very quickly check that because um, there's a bit going on here. Okay, I think my camera settings just changed from widescreen to narrow screen. But anyway, so there's a bit of everything there. And they've got the Trolls House in the middle, which is the latest build they did outside of Mario. And uh, they tried to use as many different options in the set as possible, but they saw they ran out of time, so not all the modules could be included and still get some decent playtime out of it. We're, we're looking for more, uh, for more time boxes somehow to be included. <laughs> that looks great. I'm sure uh, Jonathan's got some uh, tips awesome. for you later on. Um, <laughs> what did you think of that, Jonathan? I, I mean, I just love it when, when we include like other things besides the, the LEGO uh, Super Mario product range. So the Trolls House is, uh, is a really good addition. Um, and, uh, you know, there is a reason why we only set 60 seconds and, and we didn't put more time in there. And that is, uh, you know, life is about making those tough choices. So you have to choose what you, what you put in that level, what you think will give you the most coins or the most satisfaction. So, uh, but there are some ways to get more time, yes. Thank you very much, Jetro. Let's go to Christopher now. Hello. <clears throat> right. Um, well, we start over here down with the pipe, as usual. Uh, come along nicely. I tried to sort of think about the layout a bit. So I put all the blue sections down the middle here and off to the right as though there was a sort of river coming through um, yeah. or something like that anyway. Uh, got the clouds down here to hop up into the tree. Little desert area over here. The time block is very definitely needed because it probably takes about a minute 28 to go round, having tested a few a few times. Um, <laughs> and yep, so you zip along here, round here, and as it seems most people have done, Bowser Jr. towards the end there. Amazing. Oh, I can see a lot power of thought has gone into that. Uh, Jonathan, Sorry. what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm loving the different uh, groupings of the environments or uh, biomes as we call them internally. So putting the blue uh, together and the desert together, uh, this, that's straight from the game. And it just looks like one of those uh, places where you just, uh, you know, you want to become a little uh, mushroom character and go into that level. It looks very, very pretty. Uh, and I like that uh, there's a bit of an engineering approach there that it takes one minute, 20 seconds to go through the level. Uh, <laughs> so there is some thought going into this one as well. Thank you very much, Christopher. Great work there. On to Daniel now. Wow. You've got graphics and everything. Wow, that was awesome. <laughs> I do set mine up as a bit of a speed run. Uh, they'll start down the front here, uh, running past the toadstools up the hill. And again, I did the same as the other guys. I kind of sectionalized mine into the green, the blue, the red, and the yellow. Um, but I also have some alternate paths. So you can choose if you want to come here and fight this boss, or you can go this way around the speed course. Again, you know, there's options here where you have to take specific tracks, but there's others where you can choose to go if you want to pick up more coins or not. Um, and obviously over here, we have to fly because there is a de definite gap in the course. So, uh, and then it comes around to the finish and uh, you can't quite see that. I'm going to have to push that into screen, but there's uh, just a little Easter egg of the latest uh, clickable minifigure there that I stuck up in the tree and uh, on to the end. Uh, <laughs> wow. After getting through all the bosses. <laughs> Daniel, that's like the actual game. You're not messing around here. Um, Jonathan, what do you think of that? Yeah, it's definitely the most professional level we've seen so far with all the graphics and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> uh, I like that there's choices for Mario to be made there. That it's not just a, a, single, uh, a single run for him. Um, and uh, I got to say, like, the levels and your imagination that you've all put into this, it's, it's really cool to see. 
So well done. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daniel. Uh, on to Richard now. All right, so I've also, let's just see how we're looking there. Sorry if you're feeling sick. So we've got our starting area here and you've got choices from the outset. If you want, you can go through Lava Land, take on Baby Bowser early and then enter the desert. And if you've taken this option, you're going to need to pick up the time block fairly early on. Um, then you cross over the lake which has got an island in the middle and yep. you have the option to go and visit the toadstool village, particularly if you're interested in getting the treasure boxes. Um, and if you do decide to go and get the third treasure box from the tree, then we fly down to the finish point from there. Um, it cannot be finished in one minute and 20 seconds. Um, so you do have to decide mm -hmm. early on as to how you want to tackle the whole course. Wow, a wow. very uh, strategic build there and loving the options again. Uh, Jonathan, what did you think of that build? Yeah, again, the really cool choice of color by grouping them, Little uh, uh, the idea of having this uh, um, lake in the middle with an island. And it just, um, yeah, it really pops off the screen, that one. It's a very uh, lovely little world that you've created there. Uh, and uh, I think I'm going to have a very tough time making, uh, um, yeah, making choices for myself to who gets those creativity <laughs> multipliers at the end. But uh, I'll have a little bit of time to think about it. So, Thank you very much, Richard, and uh, better you than me, Jonathan. All right, so before we move on, <laughs> I just want to find out from you, Jonathan, what is it about this product that makes it so great to build and rebuild and play around with? I, th I think what we've just been, what we've just seen, right? That uh, you, um, uh, you know, we all shipped you guys the same products, but you've ended up with very, very different uh, levels and very different kind of stories and ideas behind it. Um, Lego is is a toy that's been passed from generation to generation, and so uh, has the, the the Mario games and the Mario world. Um, so everybody has kind of an idea of what a level could be, or uh, what is a cool way to use Lego bricks. Uh, so it's just uh, fascinating to see that everybody has their own interpretation. Um, I usually take so, a recent event that I build a level from or like the weather. So uh, yeah, right now I'm using a lot of blue bricks with uh, the bad weather here in Denmark. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, that's what this product is about, is, is, is putting your own uh, story and your own creativity into it. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Right, so guys, it's time for your first challenge. Uh, now you've seen how Jonathan approaches building a level. Now it's time to test how good your build actually is. You guys are compete against each other to try and secure your place on the scoreboard. I'm going to give you one minute and 45 seconds to collect as many points as possible on your build. Remember, you're playing for big prizes here. So, first off, uh, before we begin, Jonathan, any tips? Yeah, so you want to listen to my words carefully to set yourself apart from the competition. Uh, I have uh, three tips for you. So first of all is the question mark block and you want to try that a couple of times. Uh, there's a lot of uh, bonuses in there. Uh, there's 15 more seconds of time, which I think all of you need because you've built these gigantic levels. Uh, there's five coin reward, 10 coin reward, star power. If you get star power, go and defeat those bigger enemies um, because you get double coins from it. Uh, but every time you take an item out, it gets replaced by a single coin. Um, and so after three, four times, it doesn't make much sense to kind of keep spamming it. Then we have uh, the platforms and try to use the platforms not just as a way to get from A to B but if you go in one direction and then change direction you get a lot more coins. So use them as a little merry-go-round and not just as a, as a uh, way to get somewhere. And then finally you want to be using most of your level time. If you have 15 seconds left Mario goes into hurry up state. The music goes quicker and if you then finish 13 or 14 seconds later you get a huge finish bonus. But if you go over time you don't get anything. Of course you get the coins you collected but you don't get the finish bonus. So those are some tips and uh, yeah look forward to seeing you all play. Good luck guys. Okay and do not forget to put Mario on the start 
and finish blocks to make sure you score those points. Get into your starting positions, please. Point your cameras if you have to. I'm gonna give you a few seconds to get ready. Thumbs up if you're good. Are we good to go? I think most of us are in our starting positions. Okay, so we've got one minute, 45 seconds on the clock. I'm gonna count you down. Ready, set, go! Let's go to Graham first. Let's see how he's doing. Oh yes, moving swiftly on that rotator in the cat suit, looking good. Let's go to Chris now. Yeah, Chris is on his hands and knees, grinding, working hard, digging to get those points. There's dedication on his face. Let's see Andreas now. I'm sure this one's gonna be fun. Yes, Andreas is quite steady actually. Nicely moving, racking up those points. Nice and easy. Let's check out William now. Yep, William is very smooth on that level. Oh, Mario, he's taking a hit, he's on the floor now. Back on the platform, moving, moving across that level, nice and easy. Let's see how Jetro's doing. Lovely level, lots to do here. I think his daughter's doing all the hard work. 30 seconds left guys, 30 seconds left. Let's check out Christopher quickly. Okay, Christopher's looking very good here. Oh yeah, let's see Daniel now. Last 10 seconds guys, last 10 seconds. Quickly Richard now. Yep, yeah, Richard looks very focused. Five seconds. Time's up guys, time is up. Hold it there, hold it there. A great round. Wow, there was a lot going on there. Really impressed with your builds. Uh, I'm sure we're gonna have some big scores. All right, so uh, please place your Mario on the finished platform. And let's start with Graham. What was your score for that first challenge? That was 115, but it, uh, it cost me Let's off see. the track. He kind of destroyed it as I was bashing him down at the end. So, uh, yeah. 115? Yeah, yeah. Amazing. I feel that's going well to get done to <laughs> We'll see. We're about to find out. That's a very high score uh, for the first challenge. Let's see Chris now. I got 120. 120? Wow. <laughs> wow. Well done to Chris. Uh, let's see Andreas. We can't hear you, Andreas. Can you hear me? Can yeah, hear now me? we can. I'm sorry, that's fair. There yeah. are some issues with Mari, unfortunately. The same happening yesterday. It doesn't work totally fine, I have to say. So it's no big deal here, but sometimes it, it re restarts. So this is a red screen right now. Okay, it, sorry it, about that, Andreas. We will look into that not, uh, not, no for you. Deal, yeah. No big deal. We'll sort Mario okay, yeah, out. But how much did you get Andreas. on the, Let's move on over the level? To... Nothing. It, it, it says nothing. It's just a red screen and it... And it um, it, it collects coins, but there's nothing on the on the screen. But, but did you place him? Can you put him in the star tube real quick? Can yes, we? Uh, yeah, can you I, grab the star yeah. tube and then and then put him in, and then nothing happens? Yes. 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 Again okay. in the in the star tube. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Then it, then it's running again. Yeah. It's okay. it's totally fine. And now if you I mean, collect coins. Okay, we'll give it one more go, and then we'll do the other uh, the other scores in between. Okay, okay. Sorry about that, go Andreas. On. Thank you very much. No, no uh, big let's deal. go to no, William please. next. Uh, quite not re rewarding. I got twenty nine. It's of, uh, I believe, uh, 
my song tricked me into this. Uh, the level is fun to play, but it's not very <laughs> rewarding. <laughs> I have a discussion with him. I have a discussion with him. <laughs> yeah, Can that's you try fine, the level? Blame your son, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 29 to score. We're gonna um, we're gonna lock down for that. Let's go to Jet Row. <laughs> Over to Jet Row now. What was your score? Let me switch cameras for you. Um, we got uh, well. I was gonna say very disappointing, but I'm very happy now after after I've heard Will because we got um, 38 points. And again. Um, 38 points, still a great score. Yeah. Trust me, 38 and 29 are still very high scores. So well done to you guys. <laughs> All right, let's go to Christopher now. <laughs> Hello, Christopher. Hello. Uh, I've got 104. 104? So just, oh, wow. Just broke the 100 barrier. I'll take it. <laughs> wow, some high scores in this session. Well done, Christopher. Let's go to Daniel now. Uh, I got 93. Wow, wow, 93. Well done to Daniel. Congratulations on your score there. Let's speak to Richard. Richard? Did that work? I got 64, a personal best. 64. Wow, a great mm, score nice. there. Uh, you know what? That must have been one of the highest scoring sessions that we've had. Uh, let's go back to Andreas quickly. Andreas, any luck there? So again, it was gone after one second, but, but I saw it, it was 71, but it's, it was gone immediately. When I, when I put it, yeah, we'll take put it on the finish on again, score, Andreas. Okay, okay, I will put it on the Try finish Try putting again. it on the finish break again, ah, and okay, then you can see it. It says, an, okay, 71 again. It's 71. All right, wow. it, it works great. this time. Yep. It's fine. <laughs> A great score, Andreas. Congratulations to all of you guys for that round. That must be one of the highest scoring sessions that we've had uh, in the last few days. So, so well done to all of you. Uh, Jonathan, can you tell us who's at the top of the scoreboard so far? Yeah, we have uh, leading the pack uh, is uh, Chris with 120 coins, then Graham not trailing far behind with 115, and then Christopher with uh, 104. But it's very close. And I have to say, though, like uh, scores like 30 and 40 coins, those are normal scores. Um, but these are all exceptionally high. So if you are a little bit low on the board, don't feel bad about yourself. Uh, this is a, a rather exceptional session, I would say. Definitely, definitely some pros in this session. All right, so guys, it's time for your second challenge. Now, if you're worried about your scores, do not worry. We have another challenge, which means we have another chance for you to get into one of those top three positions for those prizes. So Jonathan, can you tell us what we have in store for this next one? Yeah, so uh, Graham, you're gonna love this one because it's all about the Piranha Power Slide. Uh, so a good, good thing that you did include it in your level because you got some practice at least. But the Piranha Plant Power Slide is all about dexterity. Uh, and Mario gets coins by carefully balancing between the Piranha Plants. Now, if you hit the Piranha Plants, you get a half a second time penalty, nothing to worry about. But you also get taken out of the multiplier. So if you don't hit the plants, you get two coins at the same time and then three coins at the same time after a while. So then you're really raking up those coins. So I would like you guys to build a level that looks like this with the start pipe, the piranha power slide, and the goal pole. So we're not using the time block, we're not using question mark blocks or any enemies. I just want to see how many coins you guys can collect by balancing Mario for 60 seconds. Or 59 seconds, because again, use that finish bonus. Thank you very much, Jonathan. So guys, do not forget to place Mario on the start and finish platform for those scores. Get into your starting positions, please. Thumbs up if you're ready. I want to see those thumbs. I want to see those thumbs. Okay. We've got 59 seconds on the clock. You guys are ready? 
I'm gonna count you down. Ready, set, go! Let's see Chris now. Yep, Chris is very steady on that piranha slide there. Let's speak to Graham now. And he has to how he's defend doing. his top position. Yes, you're right there, Jonathan. Yep, Graham's looking good. Steady hands onto Christopher now. Yep, Christopher is very focused there. Concentration on his face. He's not messing around at all. Let's see, Dan. <laughs> yep, Dan. Looks like he's really earning those points. Trying to raise his score. Let's see, Andreas. Oh, Andreas is moving very swiftly on there. Nice movement, I'm liking that. Let's see, Richard, 10 seconds, guys, 10 seconds. Yeah, Richard, the concentration once again on his face. A few seconds left. And Jet Row. Let's see, Jet Row. Quickly, William. Very nice. Time's up, guys. Time is up. Well done. Another great round. <laughs> Woo! That was exciting. Okay, so guys, remember to place your Mario on the finish platform so I can see those scores. Uh, we're going to start off with Chris this time round. Chris, what was your score? Uh, I, I hopped off a bit too early at the end, but I got 60. 60? Wow, another great score. Well done to Chris. Congratulations. Uh, on to Graham now. Uh, Chris has me beat on that one. Uh, I got a 51 there. 51, still ah, a great score. Too bad, though. Congratulations to Graham. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well done to Graham. Uh, let's see Christopher now. Okay, uh, just the 55, so middling. 55 middling. is not just the, just the 55, it's a great 55. Thank you very much, Christopher. Uh, let's uh, see Daniel now. I got 46. Well done, Daniel. Great score there, thank you very much. Andreas. Yeah, here we go. I have, uh, where was it? 42. 42, another well great done. score. Thank you, Andreas. Uh, let's see Richard now. What's your score? I got 69. 69. A great number there. Ooh, Thank hey. you very wow. much, Richard. <laughs> uh, on to Jethro. I got a nice round um, zero. Oh, I don't know how this happened, but what happened? we got zero. Give it another go. Just give it another go while we do the other uh, scores. Have another Start, go. Go on the slider and then to the finish. Have another go. We'll come back to you, Jet Row. William now. So, uh, I got a really bad 36. Uh, it's my fault, but I blame my kid anyway, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, William. <laughs> and, that, and, it, and it was a great score, actually. All right, so we're going to let Jet Row finish his round. Um, you know what? I have to say, I'm really impressed by this session. I think that's the highest. We've been speaking to so many journalists over the last few days, and this is definitely the highest scoring session that we've had. So I know some of you have been saying you've had some low scores, but for me, I've been absolutely uh, blown away. We're going to let Jetro finish his round so we can get a score from him. Then we're going to tally up the scores and find out what the scoreboard looks like. But congratulations to all of you guys uh, so far and I hope you're enjoying the session. Uh, very soon we're going to open up this session for uh, some questions. So if you've got any thoughts, uh, raise your hand very, very soon and Jonathan will do his best to try and answer them for you. Hopefully Jetro should be finishing up with his round and we should have a score yeah, from him. I have no idea about the Time's time. Up. So I just Whatever. 34. Jet Row? 34. Okay, well yeah. done. We'll take that as your score. Thank you once again uh, for playing that again. So, Jonathan, can you tell us what the scoreboard looks like now? 
Yeah, Chris is still in the lead with 180 coins, then Graham not far behind with 166, and then Christopher with 159. So very, very close and amazing wow. scores. I just want you guys to note the global high score as well, which is uh, from Martin, from uh, uh, the Remia uh, region, uh, journalists. So, um, and this is of course uh, after the multipliers. So I think we're gonna have a, a global high score today. Definitely, I agree. Uh, now, before we move on, we wanna open up the session for any questions. So if you have a question for Jonathan, please, Raise your hand and we'll come to you. Andreas first, please. So Jonathan, first of all, congrats on this new product line. Uh, my daughter had so much fun. I played it for the first time right now and it was fun. <laughs> and what, but, but what I was thinking, and we've seen so many 18 plus sets now, which appeal to older LEGO fans. And when I look at this, I really enjoy seeing my daughter playing. But, but I'm, as an adult, I would love to see a giant castle, Super Mario minifigure and all those stuff. So can you just tell us, I mean, this is a new product, which is awesome, but is this license all, also um, uh, Super Mario related for this game or could there uh, be more in the future other sets as well? Thank you so much for your question, Andres. And uh, really good to hear that uh, uh, that your daughter had a lot of fun with it, and that all, you also had a lot of fun playing it. Uh, and um, you know, w when we uh, when we set out to um, to to, uh, to make a product for this partnership, uh, we wanted to make sure that there is also a lot of Nintendo DNA uh, in the product. And uh, Nintendo is all about uh, innovation, uh, unique entertainment. And, uh, and seamless digital interactivity. Um, and this is straight from their, uh, from their uh, you know, uh, report. Uh, this is the, what, what they believe in. Uh, so uh, when we started making this product line, we wanted to make sure that not just the Lego DNA is there, but also the Nintendo DNA. And that means innovation and digital interactivity. Uh, and this is why we went for Super Mario, uh, Lego Super Mario, as you see um, uh, today. Uh, we think that there is a, a lot of iconic um, characters in there, a lot of iconic locations um, that uh, not just the kids will enjoy, but hopefully also uh, adult fans of, of Lego, uh, fans of Lego and Mario. And some sets are definitely more uh, skewed to playing, such as the Piranha Slider or the uh, uh, the Twomp Dungeon Trouble here, which is all about uh, those Mario game mechanics and bringing him to life. But other sets are more display. Uh, model and they still work with Mario like the Bowser Castle or uh, Mario's house or the guarded fortress here um, So we have tried to make a mix of both uh, Levels that uh, are really good for the for the playing uh, and specifically made to to play with and and sets that are uh, more um, traditional uh, and uh, show pieces um, and as for anything that we're going to do in the future, it's your job to ask those questions and it's my job to say that I can't release anything about what we may or may not do in the future. Thank you very much, Andreas. Great question there. Let's uh, go over to Graham now. Graham, what's your question, please? Cheers, Melvin. Um, Jonathan, uh, when I spoke to you, I think it was last week uh, or a couple of weeks ago, you talked about there being um, different ways to defeat the bad guys. And now I've been playing it, I'm wondering what are those different ways other than just kind of bouncing up and down on their backs? Yeah, uh, good question. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it was a couple of weeks ago that we, we talked. So um, there is, um, uh, of course, now you can defeat the enemies with the star power. So that gives you the double coins for it. And uh, you don't have to kind of spam them anymore. Uh, there's also the fire costume. And the fire costume, uh, which unfortunately you guys don't have, but you can uh, throw fireballs uh, back and forth, and uh, those will actually take hit points of the uh, of the enemies. Uh, and then finally, um, um, we are going to launch a uh, sort of like a hidden feature, but uh, that is not in the build that you have today. But that will be uh, released as the product goes out in in August. So there will be uh, an update. To it, you still have a uh, beta version, you could say. But a good question. Um, and let me, if I think of more ways in the meantime, then I'll uh, I'll come back to you. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks. 
Thank you very oh, much, and, uh, Graham. On I to just Richard thought of now. One... Oh no, never mind. Uh, it, 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 will, <laughs> it will also be in the update, but there'll be a, a combo system for the enemies as well. But uh, that doesn't work with your build just yet. And will there be um, instructions for all of these things in the app, or will uh, players be figuring them out as they go? Uh, yeah, there won't be instructions for these things in the app. Uh, the star power is in there. Uh, so, for instance, Boo, you cannot defeat right now. So, there's actually an instruction in the app that you need star power to defeat Boo. Uh, but for these other hidden or uh, yeah secret features, we uh, we want people to find out themselves and uh, have people like you put them on YouTube or in articles and uh, yeah reveal them to to the to the fans that that read and and see your uh, content. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Graham. Uh, let's go to Richard now. Jonathan, again, thank you very much. Um, my 18 and 20 year old kids um, were pleasantly, pleasantly engaged by the product over the weekend. Um, they, they were unsure what to make of it when they saw the original film and now, now they've, they're um, putting up a little bit of a fight for me getting to the system. I wanted to ask, how did the collaboration come around? Who approached whom, or was it um, just a mutual Lego meets Nintendo um, in a bar somewhere and said, let's do some stuff? <laughs> <laughs> we have met in a few bars, yes, in the, <laughs> in the Kyoto whiskey bar, yes. <laughs> uh, but that nice. is, that's literally how it went. So the, the management of the companies, they, they met each other and they, uh, they discussed some values. And I, wasn't, I wasn't there, but they discussed that the, the, um, the brands have a lot of uh, values in common of, of how to create uh, products. Um, a lot of the target group is the same. We're both catering for families uh, a lot. Um, so, uh, so that's when they decided that we wanted to uh, that they wanted to work together, and then they gave uh, they made a Nintendo team and a Lego team, and then they put them together in a room, and uh, we only had that one brief, and that was make a product that only Lego and Nintendo could do together, and uh, um, that had has the DNA of both companies uh, infused in it, and uh, and then they left us to it, so <laughs> so that's how it got to. Uh, to, to be and I'm really happy to hear that the 18 and 20 year old kids I'm not sure if, if they like if we call them kids uh, but enjoy the product I call them kids. Uh, and we think that uh, you know this is um, um, <laughs> yeah exactly uh, and but this, this product line is really about families playing together old and young uh, it doesn't matter uh, what age you are um, it's you know we hope that we give you the tools to then go and compete so for instance on the piranha slider you know we haven't made an online big competition uh, because uh, of course you can totally cheat on the piranha slider by maybe holding him like this and then and, and going in putting him back and forth um, and, and we think that's fine because you're really cheating yourself but if you're in a room together with people um, there's always somebody who says no you can't do that or try to use the brown slide with one hand or with your elbows or uh, you know it's about us to give you the tools to then go out and, and have a good time and, and, and make this competition analog old school uh, local play as we call it mm. thank you Thank you, Richard. Great question there. Let's go to Dan now. Uh, yeah, just like the other guys said, thanks for the invite. And uh, it's an amazing product range. And, and Nintendo, um, sorry, Mario, relatively new to me. Um, as a mock builder, the first thing that pops out in any new set or the first thing that I always do is look for new parts. And uh, I'd have to say that across the range of sets, there is a lot of new parts and new molds in this set uh, and across the range, I should say. Do you have a, a figure of how many new elements you have created for this product line? Um, oh, well, good question. I'm glad to, uh, uh, glad to hear that you, uh, do you appreciate the amount of new elements in there. Um, when we, uh, the design is all kind of a derivative of uh, the Mario figure, you know, we started with him. He had a certain amount of technology that we needed to put in him um, for, uh, yeah, for the um, for the play experience to work. Uh, and you know, so that technology gave us the size to start with, and then it kind of trickled down into the other characters. Um, and uh, we also experimented with like molded figures, for instance, completely molded figures, like we do with other lines. Um, but uh, 
it was actually Nintendo who also said, like, let's uh, try and have the characters be brick built because this line is all about creativity and building yourself. Um, so uh, they uh, they actually really liked our idea of having these square characters, but then of course they need a lot of uh, new elements to to you know to bring them alive and to make them uh, iconic. As the amount of set of uh, new elements. Um, is it okay if we get back to you on that one? Because uh, I have a rough yeah. number in my head, but I don't want you to uh, put something uh, on the website that is wrong. So I would like to give you the correct information. So we'll follow up with you on that one. Thank you. It's, a, it's around two or three. Thank you, Dan. Another great question. You guys really know your stuff. Uh, let's go to William now. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, it's uh, two questions in one. Uh, again, coming from uh, my kid first, uh, he realized when unpacking all the boxes and starting uh, building those levels uh, that he could play only by himself. Uh, there is no Luigi or secondary character, so you can play at least two kids could gather around the same level and play uh, different characters. And second question, he was worried about the stickers with the barcodes on the various... Uh, elements and it was like if i damage one uh how can i get this uh, barcode replaced it was really like a concern uh, for him to miss some functionality because he would damage a sticker on some element all right thank you for your uh, for your uh, very good questions so uh, to the first one um uh, there is at this point no multiplayer aspect, uh, so it's all about Lego Mario. Um, but we do see that there is a lot of um, uh, social play going on uh, automatically, almost um, uh, when we do focus group tests uh, or when we uh, when we now have the product um, in in select homes, and we see that it's quite natural to to build levels together and play uh, or enjoy it together because. Uh, you know, traditional roleplay lives in your head and you can't really share it. But Mario, of course, makes the sounds, he makes the expressions, so you can uh, enjoy and get around and enjoy it together. Uh, and we also think, again, that, that it's going to be a lot of kids building levels for their mom or dad to try when they get home. Uh, or, uh, yeah, kids or uh, fans just making up challenges themselves and then playing one by one. Uh, somebody could keep an eye on the app of uh, uh, if there's any uh, you know uh, notifications there during the play. Uh, so we we do imagine that there's going to be a lot of social play, but it is uh, asynchronous, so it's it's taking turns. And then the, the, to the second um, uh, part of the question. Uh, about the quality, you know, this is something that at LEGO we are of course very concerned about and we have had this, uh, you know, we have these robots that, that just jump up and down on the figures uh, thousands and thousands of times and they go from side to side and they scrape and they, uh, yeah, they do all sorts of, uh, um, uh, yeah, simulations to, to make sure that, that whatever or however people are playing in the real world, uh, our quality stands up to it. Uh, and it turned out that these uh, stickers uh, were the, the most durable solution. We've also experimented with printing directly on the bricks, um, but that actually scrapes off over time. And with these stickers that are pre-applied, because they are so important to the gameplay um, that we decided that we wanted to apply them for the fans, uh, we can actually add like a, a number of layers or, or protective coatings on top of the uh, uh, barcode. Uh, so this is the most durable solution. And if you, you know, uh, if you lose one or if you manage to damage one, of course, we'd love to know about it. And uh, we have a, a great customer service, which I'm sure that can help you out there. Thank you. Thank you very much, William. Let's go to Jetro now for a question. I have two questions, actually. Uh, one is that uh, the screen on Mario gives you some feedback on what you're doing during the game. But um, I wear glasses, and I'm not very good at focusing on, on stuff. Um, during gameplay, I find it extremely difficult at times to figure out exactly what Mario is doing, and I don't really find out what's happening until the end, or I waste a lot of time looking at the screen. Have you thought about reflecting uh, the screen that Mario has inside the app? to at least give some guidance on, on what's going on, and so that others can also follow along during gameplay. 
thank you for your question, and that's actually a really excellent idea. Um, so first of all, uh, when 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 kids are playing, um, after they know Mario's reactions, they play a lot by sound. Uh, so what we uh, what we attempt to do is that every reaction that he has or every power up you get also has a unique sound to it. Uh, so uh, the first time you play with it, uh, when you get an item from the question mark block, you know that this sound, doo -doo -doo, that that's the mushroom sound. And now he has a mushroom on his belly. Um, so what we have found is if we get rid of the screen, it doesn't work the experience at all. But that during level play, you do, kids don't actually need to pay too much attention to the display uh, because they, after a while, they get used to the sound. So I would encourage you to, uh, to first try and look at the screen um, when you have on the first couple of playthroughs and then as you get uh, used to combining the visuals with the sound you can most likely uh, play without the visuals. As for reflecting it on the app we have also experimented with that. Um, what, uh, what's a little bit of a danger there is then uh, the app becomes a very active part during level play and um, you would almost start looking at Mario's reactions like this on the phone and you would just start using him uh, to scan the different uh, bricks and to, uh, yeah, he, he, um, we've tried it and he became a tool. He became just a tool to get coins and, and that is not what this experience is about. So it was, uh, you know, Suzuka-san, the creative lead on the Nintendo side, who actually said, um, uh, let's make sure that, that you as a player are keep focused on Mario as a, as a friend and as, a, as an alive being rather than try to maximize the amount of coins by having the, the perfect uh, reactions one-to-one uh, -one on the app. Uh, the app just became too overpowering. The app now goes completely black uh, because it's not part of the core play loop. And, uh, and yeah, we would, uh, we would like to keep it that way. If we do find a lot of users um, uh, like you uh, experiencing troubles, we can, of course, update the product. Uh, but for now, um, yeah, this, this is what we found to be the best solution. Makes a lot of sense. Can I ask a second question or is there anybody else who would like to butt in first? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Um, Lego has been working with electronics and most of it so far in the last couple of years is powered up. Now, I suspect there must be some kind of link to powered up in Mario as well, uh, although I don't know what it is yet. Uh, do you plan to uh, expose the uh, sensor inside Mario at some point so we can use it to integrate it with other robotic solutions to trigger certain actions. Cool, thanks for the question. Uh, at this point in time, we, uh, we do not plan that. Uh, it doesn't mean that we, we wouldn't do that in the future. Um, I think it's a great suggestion. Uh, and then uh, I'll, actually, uh, I'll actually take this in and, uh, and discuss internally what are the, the pros and cons of, of doing that. Uh, and of course, we also have to get Nintendo's permission to, um, to do that. And the reason there's no like engines in the whole level play is, of course, that we wanted to uh, make sure that, that, that everybody can afford the sets. So having a, there's a lot of technology already in Mario. Um, so uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> you can imagine that we didn't want to put engines everywhere as well. Yeah, but that, that is not really my, my, my thought. My thought is that if you do happen to have a powered up set, uh, that you would yeah. have a way yeah, no, to... Yeah, I, I get your... Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, right now, no, but uh, I think it's a very interesting suggestion and I'll, um, yeah, I'll, I'll take it to the team. Good, thank you. Amazing, guys. Thank you so much all for your questions. I'm afraid that's all the time we have. Now for questions, if you do have any other further questions, please get in touch with the organizers and they will try get, and get back to you guys offline, which means it's time for the final part of our session. Now, if you remember at the start of all of this, uh, Jonathan was looking very closely at your builds and judging you on creativity. So now he's about to reveal what multiplier scores free selected players are going to receive. Jonathan, take it away. Yeah, I'm super not happy to do this because <laughs> all of the levels have been uh, yeah, really outstanding. Um, but uh, I'm going to give, uh, I have a, a couple of things that I'm looking for. So uh, using um, uh, other uh, bricks or elements uh, outside of the Lego uh, um, or outside of the Lego Super Mario range. So that gets the one and a half multiplier. Um, then I'm looking for a, a kind of a great story in a level. And then finally, uh, just the, the prettiest one. 
that just really kind of blew off the uh, really blew off the screen. So um, the one that gets the 1.5 um, um, multiplier, I think that is the one. Uh, let me just uh, check here. That had the uh, the trolls castle in the middle. I think that was. Yeah there, we, yeah, there we go. Jetro, Jetro, there we go. Awesome. All right, so 1.5 multiplier. Well done. Cool, thanks. <laughs> well done, Jetro. Uh, I, hope it, I hope it brings you something. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> then um, I really love Daniel's level as well. Um, with the uh, the speed run and all the choices for Mario and uh, uh, yeah, I think that was just a really cool uh, level that just looked like straight from the, the Mario games. So uh, well done, Daniel. Uh, two Woo! two point oh. Right, and then finally. Thank you um, very much. Awesome, and then finally, uh, I think it was. The level, that, the one that's just really the prettiest, that just really blew off the screen. And I think that is um, Christopher. Yes. Christopher's level. All right, so you get the 2.5 multiplier. Well, well done. Thank you very much. Indeed. Well done, Christopher. <laughs> okay, so. And it was a really tough choice, guys. <laughs> It was very tough, Jonathan. Better you than me, like I said earlier on. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is a crazy scoreboard. So drum rolls, please, guys. Drum rolls, please. <laughs> I can tell you the person we so have in, in third place with 180 points is Chris. <laughs> Chris, you've won yourself the Power Up Packs. Congratulations to you. Uh, the person we have in second place with 278 points is Dan. Thank you. Dan, you've won yourself Bowser's Castle. Congratulations and well done to you. Yes. And the you. person Thank we have much. in first place with a massive 397.5 points. <laughs> Is Christopher? Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! <laughs> Christopher, you've won yourself you. the full assortment. That, so that's everything you don't already have. Well done to you, and congratulations. Very much, Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> well Thank done. You. Well, listen, guys, that was an awesome session. I had a great time. Uh, thank you so much for getting involved. Uh, and a big thank you to my co host as well, Jonathan Benning. Jonathan, any last words? Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, first of all, again, you guys have built amazing levels and you've really le leaned into this session. Uh, you've, I hope you had a lot of fun playing. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, uh, Christopher, you've also set the global high score, which has a very special prize attached to it, which we will reveal uh, later to you. So congratulations with 397. Like, that's an insanely high score. So well done. And uh, I hope to uh, well talk done. to you guys again soon. Definitely. And you know what, guys, you've all got involved and we all loved having you here. So give yourself, everyone, give yourself a round of applause. Hope you guys enjoyed the session. Hope to see you soon. Take care and bye. Thanks I'm using my so I can hear you say goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Fantastic. Thank you, guys. Bye. Love you.